Are you guys here? Can you hear me? Are you guys uh, on the sidebar? Where are we at? How do I, oh, I'm sitting here in silence like a dummy. Can I see you guys somehow? Oh, we won't be able to see you. This is very strange times. Very strange. All right, so you guys can hear me all right? I got my buds in. I wish somebody would have told me that I was sitting here like a like a like a dummy, just sitting here in silence. Probably picked my nose. At least I didn't do worse things in front of uh you guys. All right. Well, welcome. Such a strange, strange time we're all living in right now. Somebody raise their hand. I don't know what that means. John or Stouty or whoever's on here. Help me out. You guys have some different settings than I do for my Zoom. That's right. <laughs> well, thanks, Brian. So, like I was saying, strange times, and I'm really excited to be here. Three of the best coaches in the world reached out to me and said, hey, I'd like for you to uh, do a recording. I, of course, I said no to those three guys, but I came onto this one instead. <laughs> I'll be here all week making jokes. Uh, just kidding. I want to give a shout out to John Stouty and Kevin for inviting their community to listen to me. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of people you can be listening to right now, and I appreciate you listening to me. One thing I'm very concerned about when it comes to this whole virus is how shaggy men are going to start looking. Because look, I mean, this is me doing my hair. It's like long, it's grown over the years. The beard is getting long. I can't even imagine what Kevin is going to look like at the end of this uh, isolation. He already looks rough. I don't know what's going to happen in eight weeks. So I'm here to answer some questions. For some of you, this is a complete change of lifestyle, meaning you go from working nine to five in an office with other people, maybe not sitting on top of your significant other and you're not used to it. I don't know if anybody's struggling with that. Luckily, this is pretty much our lifestyle. All I told a lot of people, I'm like, I was only one small tweak away from self-isolation. You know, you, other than literally going to the gym every day, this is my life. So now my life is working out in an extra bedroom, which I'm also happy to give you guys. I know you guys have some great programming out there, but if you guys want some free Thunderbro programming to do on top of the industry and News River and Watchtower programming, I'm sure I can get that to you guys either in um, you know, in the chat thread or, or anywhere else. But it's hard for me to just talk. So ask me some questions about nutrition. John gave me a couple of topics that he wants me to talk about. But what are some of your questions? I can see the chat over here. I'm ready, willing, and able to give you my best answers. I don't know if you guys are slow typers. There's like 26 of you supposedly listening and watching me. So at least one of you must have a question. There we go. Great question, Stouty. When grocery stores are limited, what do you plan with? This is getting tough. I think, you know, I, I don't know how it is. I'm in Boulder right now. I know, you know, one of the boxes in Canada, you guys are clearly doing things right. Uh, we need to be following whatever Canada is doing. You have like three cases of this thing. And then one's in Denver where things are going poorly. Um, cool. We'll talk about that next, Stephanie. And then um, North Carolina. So as it is here, there's there's certainly limited groceries. You have to wait in line just to get to into the store. What What we have started doing is obviously... Yeah, I would be happy to guess, Coach Crystal. You know, what we have started to do is I think if you can fit it into your life grocery shop during the week, we went on the weekend. It was a big mistake. We turned around and went again yesterday, and my wife was able to get in and out. Grocery shop during the week, go on some either early hours. Um, some places are kind of limiting those early hours for the elderly. So maybe right after that or or even right before they close. But that's just some easy advice. The big thing that we started doing was using um, meal companies. So two, the two companies I've been using, uh, and I have no affiliation with either, I, 
I don't, I think I have a code that they just gave you, like when you sign up. So if you guys want a, a code for either, just let me know. But we use Ice Age Meals, which is still delivering. Their food is still great. It's great macros and, you know, good quality protein and reasonably priced if you did a bigger order. And um, and, and they, he's always got some coupons going on. And then I started using Butcher Box. And, and I just, my next box goes out on like the 27th. So if you want a code for either of those, please let me know. Um, I'm not here to, you know, pitch anything to you guys, but if you want it, hit me up in the comments. Um, so I hope that helps, Stouty. All right, Stephanie, this is a great question. Macro counting versus intuitive eating. I go back and forth. You know, I've been, I've been tracking macros and I see some, somebody asked, jo, Joanne asked, so I'll kind of answer both questions at the same time. Uh, I, you know, I started macro counting about five years ago. My background is in fitness. I started as a personal trainer when I was like 15 years old. Like my first job, I started going to the gym, working out. And within a year, I was taking my ACE, which is the American Council of Exercise, and passed my personal training and in high school training people. So this is really all I've ever done. Never had a paycheck, never had a steady job. And over the years, I've owned three affiliates from 2007 through 2014. I've sold all three, but I'm sure as these coaches can attest to, meaning Stouty, Ogar, and, and John, and I know they've battled through it because we've talked about it and I've seen their social media. Often your own fitness, your own nutrition falls to the side. You know, you were no longer filling our cup first. We're worrying about the thousands of, of people that we're trying to interact with, be it, you know, your, your affiliate members, if you're working on uh, seminar staffing, like, like these guys do, if they're just traveling the world, promoting, you know, the awesome stuff with Wheelwad and all that, you know, it's like, we're so focused on helping others, we forget about ourselves. And about five years ago, maybe a little longer now, I found flexible eating. I was the affiliate owner that looked in the mirror one day and I was like, I'm fat. I'm, I'm so upset with myself. I need to make a change. Did as much research as I possibly could about flexible eating and dove all in. And the reason I became so passionate about it was because, you know, in my late 30s, and I'm only five foot three. Like, you know, I look tall on camera. I think the camera adds a few inches, but I'm only five foot three. So when I put on 10 pounds, like I go from lean to chubby, like like that. So I found this flexible eating thing, and it was the first thing that ever worked for me. John was one of my members at Albany CrossFit way back when. <laughs> John was one of my members way back when, and he knows how we were at Albany CrossFit. It was, you know, paleo, eat meats, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar, and keep intake to levels that support exercise and not body fat. Fitness in 100 words, the first two sentences by Coach Glassman, you know, and I was just like, that's what you have to do. Well, it turns out that doesn't work for everybody, and it wasn't working for me. And when I found flexible eating, I lost 30 pounds. You know, I went from about 165 to 135, and not only did I lose 30 pounds, I did it in a way that I found to be sustainable, you know, meaning all these years later, I'm still doing it. And I did it in a way that allowed me to eat foods I enjoyed. For so many of us, when we think about diet, if I were to propose to you guys, hey, let's start a quarantine diet tomorrow, immediately, you know, other than thinking about what food you have in your house, you'd also be thinking about what food do I have to deprive myself of? Is it the sweets? Are you the cookie monster? You know, the Ben and Jerry's, the cake person? Are you the, are you the candy? you know, Swedish fish, M&Ms, or you yeah, savory, you know, all the cheeses. And I found that rather than depriving myself, if I just eat a little bit of these things every day in the right amounts, which is what flexible eating is to answer your question uh, with the email there, how do you define it? It's eating the right amount of food to help you support your, your lean body mass, just like CrossFit speaks about, but without putting on excess body fat. And that just means eating the right amount of protein carbohydrates and fat. Now, when we talk about intuitive eating and we talk about different styles of flexible eating, the truth is there's all different methods to it, you know, and, and my approach is one of sustainability and one of not overwhelming yourself. You know, the analogy I often use is if I took a fire hose and sprayed it at you, it's a really good way to make sure you get wet 
but not a really good way to make sure you get hydrated. So for all of you, you have to kind of decide where are you today? And obviously I'm not interacting with you guys, you know, personally so much here. So I don't know that, but you have to take a deep, you know, dive into yourself. And also for the coaching staff out there, this is something to consider. We often are just like, hey, here's what it is. Here's the prescription, go do it. Where for a lot of you, you know, there's 26 of you on here. If you've done nothing for your nutrition, I'm sure that's unlikely given the, you know, the, the, the coaches that you interact with on a daily basis. But let's say you haven't or you've fallen off the wagon because in times of stress or times where the grocery stores are bare, it's a little more challenging. I would suggest take this opportunity in your self-isolation or distancing or whatever it is and give yourself one small win a day. And maybe for today, you know, we're already depending on where you are, you know, it's, it's in the evening, maybe for today, it's limiting the snack or the treat you were going to have tonight, or maybe it's cutting yourself off by a certain time, 8 PM, or maybe it's making sure you go finish 64 ounces of water. So that's the benefit of macro counting. You know exactly how much you're taking in every day. And a lot of you may have heard of it. For those of you that haven't, we typically use our phone, right? We use an app. Typically, we use um, My Fitness Pal. So I'll show it to you, right? My Fitness Pal. And you can plug in your macros there. And the goal is at the end of the day, so you can see, I haven't plugged in anything yet. I know what I've ate, but those are my numbers at the top of the screen. And then at the end of the day, the amount of food I eat has to equal that. So I'm going to take in 135 grams of protein, 65 fat, and 320 carbs, which will give me you know, approximately 2,405 calories. For a lot of people, we get those numbers and our immediate reaction is, okay, well, this is you know, how much I should eat. I should eat less, so I lose weight. The truth is, for most of you listening, and again, without knowing any of you, what I can tell you from my years of experience in helping many people do this is you're probably not eating enough. Now, that may have changed right now. We're in a very different time. But chances are, if you go to the office or you have a busy daily schedule, you know, hours and hours go by and you maybe have a small breakfast and you, 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 know, you may have had some small meals, but it probably isn't enough to support your activity, especially those of us that do CrossFit or you know, muscular that are training hard. It's important to not only not eat too much, but also make sure you eat enough. So let me go right into it. Melissa asked a great question. How do you determine your numbers? Because I can't answer a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one questions in this way, I'm going to give you a very basic way to start. Neville, what's up? Um, thanks for hopping on. Um, I'm going to give you a very basic way to start. And this is what I want you to do. So everybody, think for a moment. I'm going to eliminate some of the questions you might have. I don't want you to worry about, um, let, let me put it this way, actually. Let me rephrase that. Think about your goal weight. Think about your goal weight right now. What's your goal weight? And here are the things that might go through your mind. Well, I don't know what I want to weigh, or I don't really care what I want to weigh. I, look, I want to look a certain way, or I don't care what I weigh, but I want to perform a certain way at the box. Great. We can't measure that, but we can measure what the scale says. So I want you to think, when I look in the mirror, when I'm performing my best, what's that weight on this scale? That's your goal weight. And I also want you to do one, one thing further, and this is typically for women, but, but some men as well. We, we often set ourselves up and say, oh, okay, my goal weight's 180. I'd be happy at 180, but the truth is you want to be 175. And for so many of us, when we've been on diets in the past, they're challenges or they're very hard to sustain. And I want you to think of this from the approach of, this is sustainable. If I got on a diet that really, that's a diet, so don't get me wrong. It's not, I'd like to say it's simple, not easy. But if I got on a diet that was sustainable, what would my goal weight be? So you have that number. Then I'm going to really give you three options. I'll give you three options right now. Sometimes I extend it, but I found 99% of people fall into these three options. And that's just basically your multiplier. So, you know, to go to Tabitha's question, she said, you know, she went from a active to sedentary job and it's a struggle. So that might be a time to, to make some adjustments. For many of us, that might be true. Some of you might be moving around more than ever. Some might have maintained your, your current 
activity. 11, uh, you're doing a workout still every day, you know, even if it's in your extra bedroom or your basement for 30 to 60 minutes. And, and outside of that, maybe you're walking around a little bit, you know, in the house, in the home office, but you're not doing a crazy amount. That's an 11. 12, what I've said, but maybe a little more activity. Maybe it extends beyond an hour. Maybe it's two hours. Maybe because of everything that's going on, you've decided to do more endurance type stuff and you're spending time running or biking or hiking or rowing, whatever it is. And then 13, which is going to be very unusual, especially given the current situation, would just be like someone training for regionals. You know, if you're looking at the, you know, knowing your members, it would be, you know, I know most of you know, like Logan, he's probably a 13. Like the dude trains all day and he's, he's ridiculously strong. So goal weight, activity level, I want you to multiply it. So you're going to multiply those. I'm just going to give you the calories. That's the number of calories you're going to take in. So let me, let me use an example. I, I, I'll, I'll go with like a common female goal weight. Let's go with 140 and say it's an 11. So this female or male, small male, would get 1,540 calories. Now, very simply, I want you to divide that into 40, 30, 30. So I want you to take 40% of those calories. So all you have to do for that is go times 0.4. That's gonna give you 616 of those calories are gonna to come to you via carbs. And if we go back to that 1540, you're gonna go 30%. And that's going to mean 462 come from protein and also 462 come from fat. So we need to do one last step. We have our calories. We have our calories per macro. But the one difference is protein and carbs both have four calories per gram. So for one of those 30%, you're going to divide it by four. That's going to give you your grams of protein. So this female that has a goal weight of 140 and an activity level of 11 will take in 116 grams of protein. The same female, we're gonna divide that same number by nine because fat has nine calories per gram. Yes to Tabitha. So now let's round up, even though that doesn't make mathematical sense. 52 grams of fat and then carbs is also four. So you take that first number and di divide it by four. It's the first time I've ever had to explain it without seeing anyone's interaction and on Zoom. So I hope I did a good job and I know how to get in touch with these three coaches to push some information to you guys after. So I'm sure we can do that. But if you have questions about what I just did, I'm gonna go back and read through. That makes sense. Some of you are getting it. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I need this on paper. Number one priority, goal weight times activity. Absolute worst case, there's your calories to hit. 40% of those calories should come from carbs, 30% from protein, 30% from fat. We'll follow up on all that. Let me go back to some of these questions. Favorite anti-inflammatory foods. Um, I would say I don't have favorite anti-inflammatory foods. I know what foods are inflammatory. So more so than eat these foods to prevent inflammation, I would say remove these foods to prevent inflammation. You know, going back to everything I was saying where I said, oh, I don't know, you know, macros and intuitive, you need to track macros and you need to do it for a generous period of time. I'm talking more than three months, you know, up to a year to really understand your body. From there, if you want to think about intuitive eating, it's not bad. I still track, I still have a long streak on my, my fitness pal, because I think it's important. There's, there's a very uh, great sense of, hey, I ate the right amount of food today. It's really encouraging to know, hey, it's like filling up your gas tank. You feel that click with the pump and you're like, that's full now. It's the same thing with your macros. When you track and you know you've ate the right amount of food, it's satisfying. That's, that's the amount of food I need. You know, because when you're bored, especially this time and you're binge watching, you know, The Office or whatever you're doing on Netflix, the chances are you just want to eat more, but you're not really hungry. So when you know you've ate the right amount of food, it's nice to just be like, that's it. I'm good. With intuitive eating, again, it's, it's not bad, but I would say you really need to focus on the quality of foods. And if you do that, I would say for all of you, depending on you know, how you're responding to this that's going on, 
it's it's either a really good time to make a, a big change or it's not. But I would encourage a lot of you to consider removing some of those processed foods right now and really focusing on the good quality. Basically, you know, you see everybody pushing carnivore, you see everybody pushing keto, that philosophy, but just paleo, eat meats, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. If you do that, you're going to be successful. And the way my brain works, it's very black and white. So if I can decide I'm not eating this category of foods, it makes my life easier. And I tell, I tell you what, the reason I really started doing that lately is I, we've all realized how important our health is. Well, everyone's like worried about interacting, which we should be. But the truth is we've been doing the right things. You know, all these people that are like, these are the things you should be doing. Wash your hands. Yeah, of course we should be washing our hands, but we're doing the real things to keep us healthy. And that's eating good quality foods, getting a good night's sleep, keeping stress to a minimum. I hope that helped. It's very challenging to do all of this. I'm making it look either very easy or very complicated. I don't know. Stati will give me the answer. Cool. So yes, you can put it in a blog and Stati, I'll get back to you. I'll talk about intermittent fasting. Shelby, if everything is affecting your, your stomach, I mean, I don't know you, Shelby, but we'd have to consider is stress involved right now? It's a very stressful time. Um, but I would definitely recommend, I'll tell you what, I love flexible eating for the, for the reason that, <laughs> for the reason that I love cinnamon toast crunch. I love donuts. I love pizza. And I, for the first time in my adulthood, could eat those things and not get fat. But there's a price you pay and it's how your body feels. And I know for me, over the last month, really, I've, I've minimized those to a great deal and my body feels better. And I think it's important, you know, I, I, if, if you were going to do anything, Shelby, I'd say, hey, keep it to paleo foods, right? Minimize anything that's not a meat, vegetable, nut, seed, or fruit. And then, and then see how your stomach reacts. Intermittent fasting. It's great if you're doing it for the right reasons. For so many of us, not us, but for so many people, and this maybe you guys, I won't be able to see it in your eyes, but maybe you or maybe one of your friends, we think of like, I'm going to do intermittent fasting. No, no, I'll do keto. No, I'll do carnivore. And it's like, what you're really trying to do is have a, an easier path. And again, maybe it's not you, but a lot of times these buzzwords come out and it's more like, oh, I found the trick. I found the key to getting lean but without actually putting the work in, there's no such thing. So intermittent fasting isn't bad, but you just have to decide why you're doing it. For so many people, they do it and they're like, well, if I intermittent fast, I'll eat less, therefore I'll lose weight. Turns out you can cram quite a lot of food into eight hours or even six hours or even four hours. So if you're going to intermittent fast, you have to stick to it. I would still want you to have an idea of how much food you're eating in that window. So for those unaware, intermittent fasting is typically a period of time where you're not eating. A, a pretty common one is 16 hours. So you go to bed at 8 p.m. and you stopped eating right before bed and you don't start eating again for six till 16 hours later, so noon the next day. Not that big of a deal. Really all you're doing is skipping breakfast. But then within the next eight hours, that's when you're eating. And again, you cut it off. And you can have as much or as little flexibility in there as you want. You can do 16-8. I know some people that do 24 on, 24 off. There's all sorts of methods. The, the, the reason intermittent fasting originally got popular and grew was because they realized it was great for cancer patients. It was great for people with inflammation. It was great for people with type 2 diabetes. It was great for people with autism. Um, Asperger's, you know, all, all sorts of diseases. And, you know, by minimizing that period of time when we ate, your body is able to recover. When we eat, we release free radicals, our body has to digest, all this energy goes into it. So that was originally why people started doing it. Then the rock started doing it, you know, and other people started doing it. And it became the cool thing to do. Personally, I'm a huge fan of it. I grew up wrestling, I grew up cutting weight. It is not a big deal for me to go a day without eating. Um, you know, I still drink black coffee and I still drink plenty of water. But if you're going to do it, just 
you know, think about it. We have an intermittent fasting book on our site. I don't remember if it's, it might even be free. I don't remember. It's on ownyouryeating.com. That's my wife's company. Um, so we have a lot of resources there as well. And if, if you want anything, hit me up. We'll take care of you. Tracking alcohol, uh, Joanne. Yeah, this is a tough time. And for those of you that are probably, you know, stressed out at work or home with kids or even home with your significant other, and like, I need some red wine. I need some, you know, a martini at the end of the day. I think you should still track it. The way I recommend tracking alcohol is 25 grams of carbs. So imagine again, uh, that, that same female at 140 pounds and say she got, um, I can do the math real quick, 1540 times 0.4. She gets 154 grams of carbs. You want to have one drink today? Cool. We're going to subtract 25 from that. Now you have 129 left. You're just tracking it. Now, alcohol is doesn't have nutritional value. So I, I would say don't save up all of your carbs for alcohol, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a drink or two in your life. You know, I'm not here to judge you guys. I'm a big fan of the five block deli sandwich, four ounces of deli, two of cheese, bread. That's, that's great, Brian. Yeah. I mean, just track it again. That's great. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Um, I would say obviously the bread, you know, de deciding if you want to continue eating bread or not, but meat, cheese, avocado, that's great. I would, I would challenge you to maybe wrap it in some lettuce or, you know, at least seek out better quality bread. I like um, Dave's Killer Bread. That's what we usually get. And there's a pretty lean one that's like 100 calories per slice. Check that out. That guy's got a great story, by the way, if you've not heard it. Um, what other questions do we have? Or is that it? Did I answer all your questions? Deli meat recommendation. You know, the, the cool thing about flexible eating is you can literally eat anything you want, just the right amount. If you're talking about quality, um, I prefer Applegate, I think, you know, I just, um, you know, buy what's on sale. Views on supplements, why and when. I'm not a huge proponent of supplements. I think you should be getting as much as much food as, I'm sorry, as much of your vitamins and minerals and macro and micronutrients from food. This time again, I know it's, I keep saying that, but it is a little different. If you were struggling to get in your protein, maybe get yourself a, a protein powder. Um, I've, I've used a couple different uh, brands right now. I'm using Nutrex, um, great stuff. You get a huge bag of protein, like pretty cheap from them. So I, I'm not a huge fan and I, I rarely take it unless I really feel like I need it. Like I'm not getting, I'm, I'm not going to get my protein in for the day, but I would say more than nine out of 10 days, like maybe twice a month do I have a supplement. The only, and, and let me clarify, there are, there are some supplements I recommend. Fish oil, um, I, I use a lot of, not use a lot, but I take a tablespoon of fish oil every day. Um, Two other things I do, one I'd consider a supplement, one I wouldn't. Right now, especially, I'm taking elderberry every day. You can get a sugar-free one from Whole Foods. I assume you can. My bottle's almost out, but I had a sugar-free one from Whole Foods. And then one other thing I do, which I would love to see you guys try this out, but every, every night I eat a clove of garlic. I've spoken about that a lot of times, but this is just a placebo for me, I think, at this point. But I feel by eating garlic, I don't get sick right now. Obviously, we're all trying to not get sick. So whether or not it works or just makes, you know, it, it's either keeping disease away or just keeping my wife away from me. I'm not sure. But that that garlic is a key. Uh, let's go someone's. else. Cool. Well, what happens have you set in place for success? Meal prep. Oh, great question, Stephanie. Yeah, a couple things that I do. One, this was not a great day to show you this, but but most days I plan my day in advance. So I wake up in the morning and I just kind of plug in what we're going to have throughout the day. So I don't have to think about it. I don't have to play kind of food Tetris throughout the day. Just, okay, breakfast, three eggs, bacon, boom, boom. I know what I'm eating. Lunch, I know what I'm eating. Same for dinner. Obviously, the more you can meal prep, the more simple it is. And, and this time again, I think what's really important right now is 
if you have kids, it's a struggle, but removing just snacks from your kitchen, like you're going to get bored. You're going to have a long day. You're going to want to sit on the couch. The less tempting foods that we have sitting around, the better we're going to be. So meal prepping, planning your day in advance. I mean, yeah, if, if you're still driving around, Stephanie, and you're still on the go, never put yourself in a position where you can get hangry. And that might mean having jerky around, might mean having a bag of trail mix. Protein is the hardest thing to catch up on at the end of the day. So you, you probably, if anything, want to have protein available throughout the day. Or maybe just have, you know, they make those packets of protein to go. Maybe just have one of those with a shaker bottle near you at all times. I'm only eating chicken and seafood. How should that? Uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, I'd say more so than alternating. It's just getting variety. Right now, you know, A, I would make sure all of you, regardless of where you live, try to get some sun every day. They're not only finding uh, that this coronavirus, I, I don't want to spread false stuff, but they were saying it, it doesn't exist as easily in the sun. So plus vitamin D is just really good for you. Vitamin D is very highly linked to your overall health. So get outside, even if just for 20 minutes a day. Um, and then from there, just try to get a variety of foods. I know the grocery stores are limited, but do your best to get a variety of macro and micronutrients. Oh, see, I was right about uh, the garlic. Thanks, Yannin. Some other tips as you guys, if you have any more, I'm, I've got nothing to do. I'm gonna literally just sit, this is my bed. My wife has commandeered the living room. I have nothing to do other than, you know, probably watch another movie today. Um, so, and I downloaded a book. So if you have questions, I have a no rush. Um, <laughs> Emily, what are the best nuts to eat? I feel like Stouty put you up to that question. Like, I feel like it's a, it's a leading question. M make sure that's not a leading question. I'm trying to get me to say anything dirty on this, on this recording. I, you know, Kevin and Stouty and Prescott, they got weird said, Sense of humor. So I don't, is that a fair question, Emily? Stouty, is that legit? <laughs> so um, what are the best nuts to eat? I, you know, I think a common theme you guys, and we see this a lot is like, what should I eat? When you have to eat what you enjoy and what's gonna cause you to be the most successful. So if you love peanuts, yeah, I'd say, hey, peanuts aren't the best, but eat peanuts. If you like cashews, I mean, we go in our pantry, we have two types of nuts and seeds. We have unsalted, unroasted cashews, and we typically have pumpkin seeds. Not because they're like, these are the um, cure to the coronavirus, but it's more just like, these are what we like. Good quality foods, cashews, almonds, macadamia nuts. Those are probably, you know, the top three nuts I would, I would focus on with good omega. Um, uh, that, uh, that, that's a fair question, Emily. What's a good way to get your protein without going over your fat. So if you're new to MyFitnessPal, new to tracking, what you'll find is you may hit your protein and not realize, well, I had bacon, I had steak, I had eggs, you know, and I had more steak. And it, you hit your protein, but you've really demolished your fat because steak might be high in fat. So you just have to find uh, lean sources. Chicken, you know, lean cuts of steak. The the more treats you want, if you want to have a cookie every night, do it. You know, two, three Oreos, whatever it takes to keep you satisfied and keep you tracking again the next day. But you just have to be aware of how much fat you're going to have before them. So when I first started flexible eating, and he asked about nuts, I used to just smash cashews. I used to eat like a tub of uh, Costco cashews every couple of days. So I realized how much fat I was eating. Fat isn't bad for you but too much of anything can make you fat. And it just so happens, like I said earlier, there's nine calories per gram. So fat's much more calorically dense than protein or carbs are. You don't necessarily need to track fiber or sugar because if you're tracking your carbohydrates, by default, you're tracking both of those. What I would tell you is you should be aiming for at least 20 or so grams of fiber per day. A, that's gonna keep you regular and B, if you're getting 20 grams of fiber per day, most likely you're getting a good amount of good quality foods in. If you find you're not really getting a lot of fiber, you're probably not having enough vegetables and, and potentially limiting your whole grains. Um, I, I wouldn't be opposed to increasing your protein if you're trying to build more muscle, assuming you're 
training is, you know, you know, backing that. I the only what I would potentially do is either do the calculation the way I laid out and bump up your protein maybe ten percent of of what it came out to, or if you also want to lean out at the same time, so you're not just wanting to put on size, but you're also concerned about getting lean, you can switch your protein and carbs. So instead of 40, 30, 30 carbohydrates being 40%, you can go 40% protein, 30% carb, 30% fat. That would be something I would consider. doesn't matter if you go over your fat, but if carbs left. Technically, it balances out. So again, you know, your, calor- your calories is really what you want to keep in check as a foundation. If we can do that well, we layer on the macros. So yeah, you can go over your fat and under your carbs and balance your calories, but just be aware of that. And fat is more calorically dense. So if you go over by 10 grams of fat, you're going to need to be under by at least 20 grams of carbs. So just keep that in mind. But there are days where life happens and you have too much fat, you go out to eat and you need to limit your carbs. Certainly okay. Uh, Dairy preference. If you enjoy dairy, it doesn't mess up your stomach too much. For me, dairy messes my stomach up a bit. You know, I'm a, I love sharp cheddar cheese, but it also really hurts my stomach and causes some uh, arguments in the bathroom with my wife. So I try to limit it. But, but again, you have to see what works for you. If you can drink a glass of milk, have some ice cream, and your stomach is fine, by all means do it. For right now, if you're just getting started, Stephanie, I would recommend one set of numbers across all the days. You know, your activity level is is an average. So if you give yourself an 11, it's an average. That might mean one or two days a week, you do a second workout. One or two days a week, you're resting. One or two days a week, you're just hitting kind of a a standard day of training. So I, I always recommend keeping your numbers equal across all days. The simple, the more simple you can make this, the better. How are we looking? Thoughts on CBD? Oh, shout out to Tishy for ending those arguments. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate that. He's absolutely right. Thoughts on uh, CBD oil? I take CBD every day. Um, but if test it. See what works for you. But I, I like CBD. Thoughts on apps like RP? I've never used the RP app. I've heard good things. I've been a proponent of my fitness pal since day one, and mostly it's probably just because I've gotten used to using it. I don't, I don't want to have to learn how to use another app. But I saw the RP app at Wadapalooza, and it looked decent. Um, I would just say pick one you're comfortable with. There's no, there's no uh, reason to use one over the other, unless it's just because you prefer it, and that's what I would recommend. Find the one that's most simple for your life, and that's really the answer to most of these questions. Is test it, see what works for you, and if it works, keep doing it. If you don't like it, stop doing it. John told me I can give myself one shout out. So I'm going to give myself one shout out. And that's just my book that I wrote called Best Hour of Their Day. Under no uh, obligation to go over there. But if you enjoyed listening, that book is about my career and fitness and owning three affiliates and selling three affiliates and all the lessons I've learned in between. Uh, we did a, we did a show, a YouTube show, uh, where we dropped into different boxes and Noose River is actually the season finale. Season finale. It's going to come out next week, but we have nine episodes currently up or coming up, um, by the end of the day. So you can check those out, but that's the book I wrote. So if you're, if you're interested, you want to learn more about me as an individual and owning three boxes and all those great stories. That's the link. The book club is assembling. Thank you. Um, And then if you have other questions on anything I've covered, please reach out. I'm going to just, you know what? I'm going to just, here's, here's our email that just has to do. If you have a nutrition based question, hit me up there. My wife will probably get back to a lot of those, but we're happy to extend a ton of discounts for you on, on anything you need. And then if you um if there's any questions you have, that's a great way to go. If you if you listen to this and you and you need a, you need something um more clarified, just hit me up there. But any, 
happy to stay on. If you have more, if not, I'm going to uh, go back to watching The Office. I know I use that as my example, but it's just because it's always good. I can, I always enjoy an episode of The Office. Does it? Let me ask you guys questions. Does anyone love The Office as much as I do? See, smart man, your husband. It's just great. It's just if you want to decompress, that's what you put on. Just mindless entertainment removes you from all this chaos in this world right now. Just go watch Michael Scott, Dwight, you know, Jim and Pam, and you'll love it. All right. Stouty, we good? Yeah, I've watched it three times through, Tabitha, and then I just catch it when it's on TV or when I'm sitting around. Cool. Well, it looks like somebody recorded this. I don't know if it was me. So, Stouty's back on track question. Okay, I got everything. Um, cool. Well, if I recorded it, hopefully we could share it somewhere. But thank you guys so much for, for listening to me chat. I'd love to do this again. And of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to um, reach out. Thanks, Jen, for, seems like you have facilitated everything. Stouty, John, Kevin, for allowing me to speak to your communities. Um, tough times for everybody. I hope you all just continue to support your affiliate and support one another. And don't forget to take care of yourself and all of this. It's, you know, just like on the plane, put your mask on first. You are of no good to anybody else if you're not taking care of yourself. Thanks for listening to Best Hour of their day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, so it becomes super simple. Some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcasts. That's right. On Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite artists, but also podcasts in one place for free. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify, or browse some other podcasts if you want. You can find them in your library tab. And also make sure to follow me so you never miss an episode of best hour of their day. Thanks again for listening to Best Hour of Their Day, and thanks again to our special guest. We appreciate all you guys do for us with Best Hour of Their Day when it comes to sharing our posts on Instagram, when it comes to subscribing to us on YouTube, when it comes to the constant feedback. We are grateful and we appreciate it. We are trying to build a community based on coaching development and becoming the best version of yourself. And it goes without saying that we couldn't do without all of you. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Season one of Dropping In is out. We are getting tremendous feedback and we'd love for you to check it out. Leave us a comment on there. Head over to our Instagram, give us a follow, like our pictures, Feel free to share anything that resonates with you. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback for us, please don't hesitate. Email us, besthouroftheirday at gmail.com. Thanks again. 
Until the next episode, we hope you've had the best hour of your day.